I'm Ronnie Spradlin, the mayor of Kilgore, and it's my pleasure to present to you this year's State of the City video address. The past two years have seen challenges on so many different levels, but here in Kilgore, we've rallied to the occasion and overcome everything that came our way. I'm so proud of our community and how we rallied stronger together with each opportunity. The past two years for Kilgore have seen extraordinary growth, the addition of great new quality of life attractions, improvements in primary and secondary education, and our community continues to grow stronger each day. With that, I invite you to sit back and enjoy the 2022 State of the City video address. Some roses have thorns, our thorns have roses. On the thorn side, COVID-19, snowpocalypse, shrunken tax base. But on the rose side, consider these. A brand new health science teaching facility at the old hospital location. Kilgore ISD secured voter approval for a new high school. A Swedish company announced plans to invest $45 million or more in a manufacturing facility at Synergy Park. And Major Street and utility overhauls are underway on Main Street and Industrial Boulevard. At City Hall, the past couple of years have been an exercise in doing more with less. Back in the early stages of the COVID pandemic, energy prices collapsed and a number of major oil and gas service companies closed their Kilgore facilities. The property tax base dropped by $100 million and annual sales tax revenue declined by $3 million. As a part of tightening its purse strings, the city today operates with 19 fewer full-time employees than in 2019. In fact, staffing levels are now back to where they were in the 1970s. To their credit, the city council and city staff decided early that basic services could not be impacted, even though it meant some capital projects would have to be delayed. The February snowpocalypse made heroes of the police, fire, and public works departments who braved the weather to rescue citizens and public infrastructure. For local governments, though, that weather event proved to be only a speed bump. Despite a handful of thorny issues, 2021 was a year of major successes for the City of Kilgore, Kilgore School District, the Chamber of Commerce, and Kilgore College. Even those tenants of county government that reach inside the city scored real successes. Three of the most exciting projects to hit town in half a century unfolded here in 2021. First, Kilgore College, Christus Healthcare, and the City of Kilgore entered into an agreement that will take Casey's nursing program to a whole new level and extend Christus Healthcare footprint in Kilgore. Roy H. Laird Memorial Hospital, a Kilgore landmark for seven decades, has stood vacant for almost five years while taxpayers spend as much as a half million dollars a year to keep the city-owned building alive. With this new agreement, the oldest portions of the hospital will be torn down. A brand new teaching facility to build on that location will allow KC to expand its health sciences curriculum, while the expanded Christus facility will offer a more complete emergency room, an expanded Trinity Clinic, and will provide nursing students with hands-on experience. A second major development is on its way after voters approved $109 million in new debt to build a new high school and to renovate the HVAC system and build a new gym at Chandler Elementary. A separate $4 million bond issue will address ADA issues at RE St. John Stadium and fund a new track and soccer facilities. KISD expects to complete the high school in 2025, but the other projects should be completed in 2022. Third, Camphill USA, part of Camphill APC, a worldwide manufacturer of filtration products based in Sweden, will invest a minimum of $45 million in a new facility at Synergy Park and will create at least 124 new jobs. Kilgore Economic Development Corporation's management team, Jenna Russell and Lisa Denton, spent much of the year putting together the deal that Mayor Ronnie Spradlin described as transformative. The Kilgore location will be the largest of the company's seven R&D facilities in the U.S. Looking back at City Hall from today. The special services and planning departments have had their hands full with loads of projects. The stretch of North Highway 42 between Henderson Boulevard and the railroad tracks assumed a new prominence with the completion of five significant commercial developments, Dairy Queen, Planet Fitness, Chick-fil-A, Sefco slash Huddle House, and a new urgent care clinic. Since we last got together here, permits for commercial construction, including remodeling and additions, 
totaled a whisker less than $8 million. New commercial construction in town included two new urgent care clinics, Daiquiri Express, Dairy Queen, Chick-fil-A, and Sefco Huddle House, while at Synergy Park, Wagner Tuning completed construction of its building and commenced operations. Major reconstruction and addition projects in that period included Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen, Planet Fitness, and Whataburger. In addition to those highly visible commercial projects, the last year was a busy one for the planning department. A new comprehensive plan was completed along with the downtown plan and a thoroughfare plan. With its involvement in all things Main Street, the planning department, under the steady hand of Carol Wyndham, secured 2020 accreditation for our Main Street program, hired a special events coordinator, and oversaw a handful of community events, including Fourth of July, Oktoberfest, Mingle and Jingle, Tractors, Trucks, and Fun, and downtown trick-or-treating at Halloween. Digging up from last year's snowpocalypse was a monumental task for Public Works, but it wasn't the biggest project, not even close. Public Works Director Clay Evers led the department through a complete reconstruction of the Landstrip Street and Highway 259 intersection, the overhaul of the pool house, and extensive improvements to Fire Station Number 3. Public Works has all but completed a relocation of water and sewer lines from under the Traffic Circle, Commerce Street, and Industrial Boulevard and after peeling away the asphalt, is now relocating utilities from under Main Street. That $4 million project will run for another 18 months or so. The department completed a new water main on Dudley Road and built a new pressure pumping plant to serve Eastern Kilgore. They made improvements at the raw water pump station and to the 24-inch sanitary sewer line on Houston Street. Ending the year with a flourish, the crew at Public Works replaced a major water line under Raw Street while college students were off on Christmas break. Since March of 2020, the Kilgore Area Chamber of Commerce has been extremely busy. Not busy with what you would think a chamber would be doing, but very busy nonetheless. 2021 was a great year of recovery from COVID. The chamber finally was able to hold all events in person. The chamber relocated to 1108 North Kilgore to partner with building owner Will Adamson to create the Bill Adamson Business Center, which is now fully occupied. Shortly after that move, the chamber went deep into COVID-19 mode, becoming the local and regional expert for business-related COVID-19 information. President Jill McCartney and member service manager Lisa Morgan worked hard at keeping the community up to date with details from state and federal sources with grant and loan options as well as safety guidelines. The chamber orchestrated the following. They managed KEDC's Kilgore Cares, in addition to COVID crisis fund for small businesses. They created Yes, We Are Open signs, launched Kilgore Area Takeout Facebook group for our local restaurants, delivered plastic to-go bags to restaurants, created back-to-business toolkits, held virtual networking opportunities, and partnered with the Longview Chamber of Commerce on webinars for our businesses. Apart from COVID-related activities, the organization changed its name to the Kilgore Area Chamber of Commerce, unveiled a new logo in October, launched the 2021-22 E4 Leadership Class, and an education committee and held multiple ribbon cuttings and grand opening celebrations. Healthy and happy residents make healthy and happy employees for local businesses. With that in mind, the City Council in recent years has focused significant attention on what the City Administration calls quality of life projects. Over the last 18 months or so, the Parks Department and Public Works have completed several such projects. They built a new two-acre dog park and completed phase two of the Creekside Trail System, including an underground crossing at Dudley Road. Adjacent to the newest phase of Creekside Trail, volunteers with an assist from city staff and donated materials built Big Head Creek Mountain Bike Trail and a pump track, both of which are already attracting out-of-town mountain bikers. The walking path around 60-year-old Meadowbrook Park, a gravel path since forever, received a new asphalt surface. With a major assist from the 2017 E4 Leadership Class, a new All Abilities Park, 
Friendship Park was designed and constructed near the pavilion at Harris Street Park. Downtown, the most recent phase of repurposing at the Texan saw the completion of a new balcony, ADA accessible restroom, a catering kitchen, storage, and new wiring. Meadowbrook Golf Course came one step closer to sustainability with the completion of a new golf cart storage barn. Those barns pay for themselves and generate cash to help offset other expenses at the golf course. Also at Meadowbrook, in partnership with the golfers and working with locally sourced materials, the Parks Department replaced a vintage bridge across Big Head Creek. Determined to enhance youth sports facilities, the city acquired the softball and soccer fields on Highway 135 and assist with maintenance there. The fire department offers a prime example of doing good in the face of tight budgets. Two years ago, Kilgore had a fire chief, an assistant fire chief, and a fire marshal. Today, there is no assistant chief, and newly hired fire chief Mark Henderson also serves as interim fire marshal. That's probably not the best long-term plan, but it represents what we're doing to make up for the revenue lost when those major oil-filled service companies left town. Over the last 18 months, the Kilgore Fire Department was recognized for best practices for the third year in a row by the Texas Fire Chiefs Association, and the department has gone through a restructuring phase in our organization. This includes a reduction in eight to five administrative staff and the creation of shift commander positions on each shift. With these changes, the department also promoted three captains and three driver engineers, all while improving operations and saving money. And after the retirement of longtime rescue chief Edgar Rochelle, Ryan Riley has taken over his position as rescue chief and is recruiting new volunteers to supplement the fire department's operations. At Kilgore ISD, the big news is obviously the bond election. However, that's just the tip of the KISD iceberg. 95 school districts are served by Region 7. From all the faculty members at all those schools, John Attrett, Instruction Specialist at Kilgore High School, was named Region 7's Teacher of the Year. In his first year as head coach, Clint Fuller led the Bulldogs football team to a third round of the playoffs. Coach Fuller and his staff were named Coaching Staff of the Year, Running back Davin Ryder was named the district's most valuable player. Alex Chavez was named the most valuable defensive lineman. And kicker Chris Baldazzo was named best kicker in the district. Men's and women's cross-country teams won district. KHS tennis teams were by district champs. And KHS track team finished third at the state meet. At the Model United Nations, the maps and collage teams finished first and second respectively. The original work of art entries won first, second, and third, as did the digital documentary team. Kilgore's participants were named Best Overall Delegation. KISD's academic UIL team took first place and was state champion in headline writing. Academic teams in current events, spelling, and accounting finished in second place at the regional meet, and the current events team finished 13th at state. The one-act play was fifth in district. Rusk County Judge Joel Hale credits the decade-long work of Kilgoreite Dale Hedrick with winning the repeal of a Rusk County school district that has for decades meant Rusk County residents of Kilgore School District paid more in school taxes than their neighbors in Gregg County. The tax will be collected for 2021, but after that, it's gone. Judge Hale, noting the Kilgore early voting box, is usually the largest outside of Henderson, congratulated Representative Travis Clardy with the resumption of early voting at branch locations. And of course, that portion of Kilgore that lies in Russ County got a new county commissioner when Randy Gott was elected to succeed Bill Hale. In addition to securing the Canfield project, in the last year, KEDC scored almost $20 million in new capital investments and retained 800 jobs through contracts with employers. KEDC executives Denton and Russell noted that International Economic Development Council recognized KEDC as the outstanding economic development organization in the nation. The pair says KEDC today has the most robust pipeline of projects in the organization's history. Back during the first phase of the COVID-19 pandemic, KEDC, in partnership with the Chamber of Commerce and the city, managed a COVID relief program that became a model for many cities throughout the region. At the beautiful Kilgore Public Library, librarian Stacy Cole and her staff organized a curbside checkout program as a way of providing library access while protecting patrons from potential COVID exposure. 
They also found the curbside book delivery system to be of a great value for library patrons who have difficulty getting in and out of their cars for any of a variety of reasons. The library reported a big year with a 146% increase from 2020 to 2021 in the summer reading program. This year, the library installed a people counter and learned there are consistently more than 3,000 visits per month to the library. For the first time, the library hosted a homeschool resource day and started a Spanish-English bilingual story time. Avatar Academy was a hit, as was the successful Children's Hobby Fair. This year, the library incorporated STEAM to go kits, an opportunity for kids to explore science, technology, engineering, art, and math, and take home backpacks. In the same year that Kilgore College received more than $2 million in grant money, KC President Dr. Brenda Kays was named to the Texas Commission on Community College Finance. Hmm, maybe Dr. Kays should be chairing that commission. The college, which by the way is home to one of the top ranked men's basketball teams in the whole country, received from the U.S. Department of Education $1,160,000 to help displaced or underemployed workers who are looking to improve their job skills. That's the big grant. In addition, KC received $750,000 from the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board to provide free tuition and fees for qualified individuals who stopped out of higher education or workers who have been displaced in Texas. And American Electric Power, for us that's AEP SWEPCO, is giving $190,000 to support the East Texas Police Academy. In addition to financial successes, KC enjoyed academic success in 2021. Kilgore College Adult Education and Literacy students won Adult Learner of the Year awards for the sixth straight year, and Kilgore College has been recognized as having the top-ranked online fire science degree program in the state and was ranked 19th in the nation. And in 2021, Kilgore College reaffirmed its determination to cultivate diversity on campus. KC recently formed a Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee to keep the school's culture centered on respecting the uniqueness of all, destroying barriers, and focusing on its pledge to radical hospitality. Even without the snowpocalypse, last year was a biggie for Kilgore's most visible asset, the police department. In the early year, Kilgore PD received the Star Award from the Chamber of Commerce and after an extensive audit was accredited under the Texas Recognition Program. A 10-year crime trend analysis from a third party conducted by David James, a retired police chief and consultant, showed overall crime in Kilgore declined by 10% in that decade. Embracing technology using budgeted and forfeiture funds Older in-car and body cameras were replaced with a new system that fully integrates body cameras and in-car cameras. Working with Kilgore ISD, all Kilgore campuses have been fully mapped and categorized, says Chief Todd Hunter. The maps, called Collaborative Response Graphics, are available by a phone app, dispatch computers, and accessible by the officer's mobile computer. Kilgore PD is the first department in the state to implement the system, easily usable under stress to coordinate emergency response both outside and inside a building. Finally, near the end of the year, Kilgore PD has joined with Henderson PD to create a new tactical unit with the departments to share expenses. Lots and lots of successes saw us through a challenging 2021. With you, we say to 2022, bring it.